in the 7 0 bracket. This is table number one. Brad will be on the play. He's over on the left. Hoagland on the right. Start though. Some trading of lands early on. We saw Brad win this mirror earlier today, and it was really knowing his role better than his opponents going for the late game. Brad starts on a turn to Grim Flare, swings, and it does not connect. Jeff at the ready with Grasp of Darkness. Jeff had the option to play a flare of his own. I like going for the Grasp. If Brad also had a Grasp, he'd be able to use that on Jeff's flare and start controlling his draw step. <laughs> now Liliana's both on both sides ticking up to four. Players matching their turn three plays. Presumably until you see something that forces you to change direction, the play is for Brad just to push for this Liliana ultimate and try to steal the game that way. Brad's turn four is a pair of Grim Flares to go with the first, after to replace that first one. Jeff, one flare, does he also have two? No, it is just one. Back over to Brad Nelson. And Brad will be able to use his Liliana to check the Grim Flare on Hoagland's side and also attack with his yeah. still 2-2 two -two Grim Flare just fine. Hoagland says you should target that, uh, that, that one that's already small. <laughs> Brad says, uh, no thanks. He'll shrink down Jeff, swing with his 2-2. Two -two. Maybe we'll get our first damage in. Jeff does not have Grasp up, so two will connect. Grim Flare trigger here for Brad Nelson. And there's no pump spells or anything fancy in these decks. These aren't the aggressive versions with uh, blossoming defense. So uh, Brad is just two turns away from going for this Liliana ultimate unless Jeff is able to get some momentum here. All three cards in the graveyard, land, land, sorcery. So three card types now for Brad, but does not have the fourth. Plays a fifth land and just passes. Pilgrim's Eye, the draw here for Hoagland. It's a flyer, which isn't bad, but it just dies straight up to Liliana. Yeah, it dies to Liliana. It does help build Jeff toward Delirium, mm -hmm. being both artifact and creature. But in this turn, he needs to have something that can 100% hit the Liliana on Brad's side on the following turn. Um, the Delirium is nice and all. It could get him to Ishkana, though. Brad spends this turn going to seven, next turn emblaming. See, Jeff did leave up double black here. Does he have another grasp? And so Brad's just going to do whatever he can in his power to make sure that this Grim, Grim Flayer does not have an attack at his Liliana. Looks like oh. Brad might have an Emrakul in his hand. His Liliana pluses, and I like this. He shrinks down. I kind of like this. He, he could shrink down. Yeah, looks like it's going to be the Pilgrims. He's the eye. There's kind of a, a debate for both. If he shrinks the Grim Flayer, he gets an attack on Jeff's Liliana. Right. Pilgrim's eye down. So if you can get ahead on zombies and then you spend a turn uh, using your Emrakul to make Jeff waste all of his zombies, I think that that's an avenue to victory. Oh, actually, you give away two turns. So it's possible it catches right back up. I'm not entirely sure how this yeah. plays out <laughs> from here. Uh, Brad is likely going to want to find a way to pressure that Liliana. So he's going to attack. It's going to price Jeff into some sort of block. Evolving Wilds from Brad Nelson. And he's saying, what does he want to do with the Grim Flare? Looks like there's an attack coming. It's going to go at Hoagland. Ishkana and lands are in Hoagland's hand. He will trade the Grim Flayers away. Brad says, wait, before you draw, I have more effects. Okay. Then he says, never mind, go ahead and draw. Grapple with the past is the draw for Hoagland. Hoagland's still at three card types in Graveyard. If he had to traverse the Elvenwald, he could get up to Delirium before casting Ishkana. So both players have had unembedded their Liliana's getting up to seven, so both will be able to make an emblem. Brad's will hit first. If Brad could hit Delirium, theoretically he can still hit Jeff's down. 
Grapple with the past here from Hoagland. Land, land, murder. So interestingly enough, when Jeff made that trade there, this grapple would have given him delirium first. Right. Yeah, then he would have been able to leverage his flare. He grapples back his grim flare and recasts. So now he's got a 4-4 four, four flare. Artifact creature. Instant. And artifact. Go back to Brad's turn. On seven, if he can get delirium here. Well, now that the other flare is a 4-4, four, four, that doesn't really matter. He can't swing through. Mm -hmm. His graveyard is missing instant, so if he had specifically gra Grasp of Darkness, that would be very excellent. Yeah, both players have been wanting more copies of that. <laughs> All right, Brad makes the first emblem. Imagine that Jeff will follow suit. Looks like an Emrakul in Brad's hand. He's got four card types in the graveyard. Land, Creature, Planeswalker, and Sorcery. Liliana Emblem, he's going to cast. Traverse the Ulfen Vault. At this point, it he does have Delirium enabled. So he can get Noxious Gear Hulk, and he will Gear Hulk away Jeff's Flare, swing with Grim Flare to knock Jeff's Liliana down. A and that that exchange may just be the game there. Yep. Both set up his emblem. He'll start be able, he can make zombies, yeah. knock Jeff off of his so he can't keep pace. And Jeff knows it, picking up the cards, and it is 1-0 for Brad Nelson. Yeah, really well navigated by Brad there. Got his way up to the emblem, and potentially when Jeff made that trade with the Glim Grim Flayer, he might have thrown the game there. So I want to look at the sideboards quickly to talk about some of the differences between them. Um, and Jeff's, I imagine we've seen this matchup before. Mm. Um, Jeff's side, he has Nissa Vital Force and Kalidus. Yeah, he has a Nissa Vital Force, and, uh, and it looks like an extra copy of Transgress, whereas for Brad, he has a Tireless Tracker and Obnixilis. So what do you really like more here? Uh, so Nixilis versus Nissa. Uh, this matchup really isn't about raw aggression. Um, there's certainly going to be games where you lead on Grim Flare, you can build up to Nissa, and then use that sort of haste five power creature to close the game quickly. More often, I like the card advantage of Obnixilis. I would rather have that card for the mirror. All right, so a lot of players are on the sideboard and figure out what they're doing with this matchup. Uh, we're going to say take a second to tell you about the upcoming GP we have. It's the first Star City GP in January. It is GP Louisville. On January 6th through the 8th, make plans to be part of Magic the Gathering history when StarCityGames.com proudly presents Grand Prix Louisville. Register by December 9th for the Legacy Format main event to compete for thousands of dollars in prizes and receive an exclusive playmat featuring Legacy staple and Kaladesh invention, Lotus Petal. Select the three-day Infinite Challenge package to compete in all challenge events for one low price, while also walking away with the exclusive Lotus Petal playmat. All Friday challenges are also Grand Prix trials. Come out early and compete for buys in the main event and more chances to claim a Lotus Petal playmat. Prefer 100 card formats? Register for the Ultimate Commander Package to play in four Commander on-demand events and take home a Commander vs. Playmat and Ultimate Guard flip and tray deck case. And don't forget to come say hello to Grand Prix Louisville's many special guests, including cosplayer Christine Sprinkle and an artist alley full of fan favorites headlined by guest of honor Rob Alexander. Be part of Magic the Gathering history. Register for Grand Prix Louisville today. And we are back here at... so. And that, that's coming up in, what, just under two months now. GP Louisville, the first legacy GP of the year. So Brad Nelson here now up a game, looking to move into the 8-0 bracket. The 30-year-old, originally from Fargo, North Dakota, now living in Roanoke, Virginia. He's got only eight open top eights, something you wouldn't expect. One win on those, but add to that three invitational top eights, a Magic the Gathering Player of the Year title, a Star City Players Champion. He's the only player in history to have won both the titles of both circuits. Uh, now has, also has an invitational win to his name. Yeah, what a guest. Both more top eights and more wins. <laughs> Certainly a very impressive and consistent player, though. Looks like Hoagland on a mulligan here on the play.
for Jeff Hoagland. This is a big weekend. He lost, a, he lost his players, his lead here in the 2016 race to Tom Ross last weekend. The 25-year-old from Bloomington, Illinois, he talked about that to open top eights. He's got a whole slew of them, almost twice as many as Brad. Still looking for that first open top eight, however. Mm -hmm. Has one invitational top eight. That was a couple years ago in New Jersey. Made it to the, lost the quarterfinals to David Shields. And Tom Ross took the lead last weekend with the, with the win in the open. How amazing of a story would it be if Jeff does a right Jeff back. battled back with a win? Pretty huge. Tom Ross not in attendance this weekend either. So Jeff has kept on six, starts on a just two lands, no other plays. No Grim Flare this time. I can't really say how understate, how impressed I've been with Grim Flare this weekend, watching it out of these black green decks. These decks aren't aggressive, but they just get to be when they draw it. Mm -hmm. It's a great a, a delirium enabler and a reasonable payoff card as well. Transgress the mind from Brad Nelson. We see two possible targets. It's Ruinous Path and Ishkana. Looks like Jeff with double grasp and grapple with the past. Uh, turn two transgress is not what he wanted to see. He much he was hoping Brad would do something like a Grim Flare, something he could trade these grasps with. Right. And with no land drop, Jeff is likely going to be aggressively using this grapple to find a land, which is really not what you want to do, because even from there, he needs to hit more land drops beyond that. Well, that's the difficult spot, is his hand is now just three kill spells. So Jeff needs both lands and threats, but the problem is he only gets to play one card a turn. And drawing a third Grasp of Darkness for the turn is not at all what he wanted. No. Yeah, if, if when Brad starts landing threats, they look more like Ishkana, Liliana, the Last Hope. Uh, if it, Brad's able to run a couple of those, get one to stick, that would be huge. I mean, Brad's not making any any plays just yet. He doesn't put any threats on the board. As long as Jeff keeps top decking lands, he'll be fine, mm -hmm. or at least until Brad starts committing cards. And Brad casts a grapple, flips over a Liliana, so he's now at three card types in his graveyard. Or actually, Make that instant, four. it's yeah. four. It's going to be Mind Rack Demon. Brad already on Delirium. That puts one four takes more two in. Grasp of Darkness. Yeah, puts Creature in five card types now in the graveyard for Brad. It's got Creature, Land, Instant Sorcery, and then the, the Planeswalker as well. And Jeff knows that Brad could easily run away with Liliana the Last Hope, so he expends the two Grasp of Darkness instead of using the Ruinous Path. So... Jeff, missing the land drops, just has to pass the turn back to Brad. He may not have another land either. Well, it looks like he has at least one, one Swamp. And right on cue, he did pick up Liliana. He knows about the Ruinous Path. He's not going to throw that away for no reason. He may just play Liliana and Minus in that situation then, so that he gets sure value off it. Right. It will be a vessel for Brad. Jeff, though, did have a reasonable draw there. It's grapple with the past, finds some lands that he can choose out of. And that's what he'll have to do. Takes copy of Hissing Quagmire. Yep, no real incentive to grab that noxious gear hulk without the mana to cast it. Another land drawn by Jeff. So land five is the little tap land. Land six he has set up, so now he just needs to top deck something to do with the mana. Mm -hmm. Brad, meanwhile, is going to continue to find more threats and lands. Vessel of Nascency used on the end step. We see Emrakul. We see Ishkana. We see two lands. Great options here for Brad. He did also add enchantment to the graveyard. That's his sixth card type, so you got to watch out. He is very close to Emrakul. Yep. Uh, I imagine that he would go for the Ishkana first. It already has Delirium online. It can make a huge impact on the board, and Brad has been sitting on that Liliana the Last Hope, so he can rebuy the Emrakul when it's needed. Sure. And he's going to also end step grapple. If he gets artifact into the yard, he'll have the full seven. And just tons of options. Can get the Emrakul, can get a land. Could even just get Tireless Tracker. Mm -hmm. Looking at a land, he's seeing Hissing Quagmire, Evolving Wilds, maybe a basic. I guess he's got Ishkana queued up for next turn, so he's looking at the tap lands. And it's, he has so much uh, stuff to do, certainly, when he starts casting Ishkana and Emrakul. The creature land of Hissing Quagmire are not super relevant. He does already have one on the battlefield as well. Draw is pick the brain from Brad Nelson. 
He did end up taking the Swamp off that grapple. So he has at least land six. He's got Ishkana. He's got Pick the Brain. Tons of options here. I don't know if he has the Emrakul for late game just yet, but he's, he has the mana to do it. And it looks like Noxious Gearhulk in his hand as well. So here is land number six, tapping five. We're going to get the Graph Widow and her three Spiderlings. Yeah, and I like the Ishkana here. He knows that Jeff still has a couple of removal spells. There's no really reason to go for Pick the Brain just yet. And Jeff's face as he drew a card there was just telling you the whole story. Just, yeah, yeah, you, you play your thing. Yep. Here is Grim Player. Go back over to Brad Nelson. He does have a copy of Noxious Gearhulk. He wants to go ahead and take care of that Grim Flare. It may just be easy. And that's going to be it. Noxious Gearhulk takes down the two drop. Yeah, he's really pressing a board advantage. He does not have to push for a fast Emrakul. Yeah, and he only swings the Ishkana, you see here, because of that, the land there in play. Pissing Quagmire. Jeff will use his one of those extra Grasp of Darknesses to shoot down the Gear Hulk. His hand is now two Ruinous Paths, so he'll, he'll shoot one of them at the actual Ishkana, and then just pass back the turn. Jeff's hand, one ruinous path. Brad, four or five cards here. It looks like it might be a route as long as Brad has anything. Hmm. Another Ishkana? Sure. It looks like anything. <laughs> Even, I mean, Jeff has the ruinous path for the spider legend, but that's not going to save him from these one twos. And if he doesn't kill it, then one activation will actually end the game. Right. So we pass back to Hoagland and. Is that, he might have an M, no, it's a land. Okay, Runa's Path on the Spider. Jeff will live for one more turn. Six damage is going to come across from those one twos. Brad might even just activate Hissing Quagmire here. Although, you know, just casting spells is pretty good too. Well, he'll Traverse. It's funny, he might just Traverse for Ishkana. Yeah. Seems like a pretty That's, clear yeah, path to victory. Yeah, who cares about Emrakul? Here's, here's another Spider. Yeah, and he's three more one twos. Been playing Nine for creatures. Yeah, and Jeff draws a card. He's been playing for all these turns, just still has Liliana in his hand because he was playing around the Ruinous Path. Could use it to get back Emrakul at any time, and he just has this massive advantage on the board as well. Okay, Jeff draws Traverse. He has Delirium. If only Massacre Worm were standard legal. If he gives Brad a single untap, he loses, so it's going to have to be Noxious Gearhulk. Mm -hmm. That puts Jeff back up to 11. Okay, he's technically alive. Well, gains life equal to toughness, right? So it's up to 13, correction there. And now Brad just has to spend that time to set up Emrakul. Or just attack twice. Yeah, you can do that too. But yeah, Emrakul, I like Emrakul. I mean, I'm always down to cast an Emrakul. Yeah, I mean, why would you not? Well, my opponent has zero cards in hand. I'm not that thrilled. That you ask, you know, I don't know. reasons I, why not. I'm pretty happy casting a 13 13 in most contexts. It's like a reverse Elvis Visionary. I thought you wouldn't be about that. How is that? How is that? They draw an extra card. <laughs> if they have no cards in hand, you just do Elvis Visionary with them. Yeah, Elvis Visionary is a 1 1. Which I, feel, I said it's a big Elvis which, Visionary. Which I feel is relevant to this conversation. It takes less for creatures larger than 1 1 to impress me. Brad's going to swing with some spiders, cast an Emrakul. He left back two creatures so that he could block anything that was too menacing. <laughs> Jeff's just still looking at the board. All right, we're, we're playing. This is a game. Jeff's having Magic's a great, great time. He's got nowhere to be. He's got another round to play. No, like, no, no, I'm going to make you do it. I'm going to make you kill me. Yeah. Uh, yep. Maybe Brad will pick up his deck and or cast this traverse and find a massacre worm and Jeff will say that's not legal if that was legal I would have played it against your spiders 
Liliana. All right, this is Brad is playing Jeff's turn. Yes, he will attack. It's a double block. Uh, he could kill a spider, though, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, Brad gets to order blockers. Oh, Jeff missed it. He ordered the Emrakul first. Ah, <laughs> that's... Now he's going to put three cards in the yard, two cards in the yard, some forests. Eh, not get back anything. Now Jeff gets his own turn. Ooh, Vessel. Let's see, what's, let's see what it finds. Could be anything. Could be... Could be... Now Jeff at the risk of revealing four mana legal cards. And Brad Nelson, a convincing 2-0 win. He improves to 8-0. The three undefeated players now are down to two.